Hello and welcome back once more to Green Valley Zoo. And in this episode, uh, we are building a monkey enclosure. Um, I think everyone loves monkeys, don't they? It's certainly one of my favorite animals. Um, so it was never gonna be too long before I introduced them to the zoo. And uh, I had this little gap here um, near the living wall next to the otters. And I thought, um, lent itself to monkeys and of course it's next to the food court um, and so while the parents are sitting down having their sophisticated picnics the kids could run over here and watch the monkeys um, so it kind of made sense and I had an idea of, uh, of what I wanted to do and I managed to, to make it work in the end um, as you can see the um, the, the design of the, the shape of the pen was a bit tricky and I in the end I, I wanted to make an octagon or a hexagon or something like that but in the end I just had to go with what I could do which was a bit of an odd shape but it is at least a symmetrical shape which is specifically what I wanted to achieve um, you'll see why in uh, in a while um, but yeah the only way I could do it was by placing um, some flooring down um, and then maneuvering the um, the fencing to fit it. Um, I, I don't know if there is a better technique for getting a, a perfectly shaped um, fence, but uh, it worked. It, it did okay. Um, so the basic premise of the enclosure is that I wanted a small rock pile in the middle with a tree growing out the top. Um, so as you can see here, I'm just cycling through the different trees, trying to find one that's not too big and not too small. Um, I settled on this one in the end because um, it's, it's big enough that the you know the monkeys can climb up it um, without escaping. Although in real life they probably could, um, but also I, I didn't want it to be oversized. Um, I need I need I wanted it to be wide. Um, but not too wide and tall but not too tall so these ones are actually perfect as you can see already the monkeys are in and they're up and down the tree all over the place um, now I would say I've discovered something about the capuchin monkeys in this game uh, they are buggy as hell is the uh, politest way I can put it they seem to glitch a lot um, the climbing graphics for them is a is very dodgy at times they can be climbing in the middle of the air quite often um, I, I don't know if this is a common thing whether everyone experiences this or if it's just the way I constructed this enclosure um, but you'll often see them just um, climbing up invisible barriers and things um, and they also escape um, quite a lot um, I, I think what's happened um, as you can see I'm making uh, the edge uh, with these logs um, I, I wanted it to look very sturdy this enclosure um, and the fence just wasn't doing it for me so I thought I'd cover it all up with these logs and um, yeah I think they look pretty good actually in the end but I think what happened was that they can climb on some of the logs certainly the ones at the bottom and because the fence is halfway through the log when they climb on the logs they glitch through the fence and out the other side so I since I put these in I've been getting um, alerts constantly about escaped monkeys which is very annoying so I've just turned the alerts off because I don't want to get rid of the monkeys and I don't want to change the enclosure um, you know so that's life isn't it um, the monkeys get out they run around they get captured they get put back in it's fine I can live with that um, so here this is um, again all my my zoo experiences from zoos in England and this is certainly something that they do a lot where they um, have bars that you can see through they will put um, these ledges right up against the bars so that um, whatever animal is in the enclosure will lie down right next to the bars where people can see them because obviously the zoos as much as they they need to care for the the needs of the animal um, so if the animal needs secret hidden places to get to because they're shy then that's what they'll provide um, but certain animals they will also give the option of sleeping out in the open where the public can see because ultimately 
it's the money that's brought in by the public visiting uh, which keeps zoos going so they have to cater to the animals as well as uh, us while we're there watching animals and so that's what they do so they um, they put these um, these ledges and beds and things right next to the edge of the enclosure so that's what I've done in here and it works really nicely and then I thought um, just to encourage the monkeys into the trees a bit more um, I'd just build them sort of a little uh, little beds up in the trees here with these logs put some bedding on and they do actually go up not as much as I'd like um, but they do go up there and, and lie down on those ledges um, yeah they're, they're kind of cool little monkeys really when they when they work when they're not glitching through the fence or up invisible posts um, they uh, they do look pretty cool um, so yeah, uh, it's a fairly simple enclosure really. Um, there's really nothing that fancy. Oh, I just, I, w I wanted to put a bit of water in here and um, I, th I thought I could just do it with these barriers where you just fill it up with water, but it doesn't work. And I'm, I'm not sure why that's, it's probably something really obvious that I'm missing. It may be something to do with how deep the barrier is. Maybe it needs to go down into the ground more or maybe it couldn't do it because of the rock. I'm really not sure. Um, I'm sure I'd seen someone do that somewhere. Um, so in the end, I just decided I'd, I'd just put some natural water down here in the ground. And uh, the monkeys can just walk down there and drink um, from that instead, which they do, which is fine. Um, yeah, gets the job done, doesn't it? And, it? and it looks nice. And then I thought, uh, obviously, they need some, some foliage. Um, so I was looking for some, some shrubs or something that I could put in just to create some coverage um so i found these uh they're okay but again unfortunately i think i have to remove these i think they look good but they block too much of the traversable area unfortunately the monkeys can't walk through them when certainly when they're sunk into the ground which is what i wanted um i may have just i may have kept some of them i think around the actual tree again these ones here these hawthorns they just they completely block the traversable area and in, a, in an enclosure this small I really didn't want to do that I wanted to keep it so the monkeys could walk around as much of it as possible and so I ended up going back to some of the uh, some of my favorites some of the ferns some bracken um, some of these palms a um, bit tricky trying to place them down without them being in the middle of all the other objects around but um, I got them in the end and yeah they they work quite nicely um i didn't want it too dense um but they're you know they're very small monkeys so they can hide very easily so you, it's tricky to get that balance between um providing them enough cover but not making it so dense that the public wouldn't actually ever see the monkeys and uh, i think uh, i think i did okay um you know they can they can uh, they can be seen wherever they are really um, but if they want to hide they can go up the tree or they can hide in one of the bushes and then obviously just a few bits of enrichment go in as well and then I had a thought of what's on the outside um, now as I've said in previous videos I, I, I want to try and connect keeper huts to as many of these enclosures as I can uh, and incorporate them into buildings or the enclosures themselves and I thought, well, these monkeys, um, certainly what I've seen in real life is that on any monkey enclosure like this, they have a porch, um, a, uh, you know, a double door to enter to stop the monkeys being able to escape because monkeys are very quick animals, obviously. So if you open a door, chances are eventually one of them would manage to sneak out while you were sneaking in. So I thought, well, if I put the, um, as you can see, the, uh, the keeper hut just outside here, and then I can build a building around it and incorporate a porch into it and it sounded like a nice easy simple idea and then I started building and it proved to be a lot trickier than I was hoping and that's because to do the porch I wanted to use the same material as the barrier for the habitat as you can see here I wanted to just extend it but again it's very tricky with the path uh, and so I thought well that's easy I'll just delete the path build the barrier and then put the path back but it's not that easy because it's it's the width of the path so the barrier I needed was exactly the width of the path 
And so no matter which way around you do it, you can't have them both there at the same time. So you can see that the the barrier, I do manage to get it in there. Uh, and on this side, it wasn't so bad. But when I do it on this side, I couldn't get it at the right angle um, to look good. It, it ended up, as you can see here, I, I really struggled to get the path to actually go where I wanted it to. And so I had to keep on moving the barrier. And so in the end, the barrier doesn't follow the wood. And so I get around that by um, using the same technique as I have with the enclosure, which is by putting these huge logs uh, at the top uh, to cover up the um, the fact that the barrier doesn't follow the exact 90 degree line of the wood. Um, you'll see what I mean in a minute because I'm probably not explaining that very well at all. But you can see that it's you know it sticks out the side of the the flat wood there. Um, but it's fine. I mean, in the end, it actually works out really nicely. I was very happy with the result. Uh, it just takes a bit of fiddling. But, uh, you know, it's one of the reasons why I enjoy the game. It's working out solutions to to the, the problems that we come across as we build. Um, you know, if everything went smoothly first time, it wouldn't be a challenge, would it? And it's nice to come up with uh, creative ideas as well. When you, when you have a, a problem, it's nice to have to think outside the box a bit and, and think what you can do that looks good and that is functional and so that's what I did here with these logs just just keep on putting them in until eventually it looks right and I thought I'd cover up the end cover up the roof none of that matters it was really uh, the two side panels that I wanted with the chain material um, because um, that's uh, you know those are the important areas where people can see in you can see out and obviously you'd be able to see if there was a monkey escaping uh, so yes yeah, so that's what I went with uh, and then uh, the rest of the building is pretty simple um, you know again it's a nice simple functional building it, it, it does what it needs to do I just changed these roof panels here I thought I'd actually blend the roofing in with the roof of the main building and that all came out very nicely and uh, and then there's some again just simple decoration on the house and uh, I wanted to do the surround of the house a little bit different I'm not sure how much of it is actually in the time lapse here I'll find out in a minute you can see another escape monkey there just kept getting out they really did um, but yeah I wanted to do the um, the area around the house here just a little bit different I didn't want to just do the same sort of garden technique everywhere and so I just I, I did a little different I, I put an edging on and then I did a, an actual raised bed attached to the building which we'll see any minute now I think um, and then around the raised bed uh, the raised bed is uh, filled with flowers uh, and then around the, the raised bed I, I just wanted to keep it simple. I didn't want it to look crowded. I didn't want tall things in there to cover up the flower bed. Um, I wanted the focus to be really on the flower bed. Um, so you'll see in a minute exactly what I do. Here you can see just using these beam pieces um, just to create uh, the, the outline for a flower bed. Uh, nice and simple. You just select them all and double them up. Give it a bit of height. Um, and then the usual just get some soil in there and then chuck some plants in um, very simple technique but uh, yeah, it does the job doesn't it so yeah I really like it um, you know it's exactly what you get in a real zoo they you know they wouldn't want too high maintenance of, uh, of flower beds um, certainly you know, something like that it wouldn't need a lot of looking after and you'll see what I do with the area around it where you can see all the grass at the moment is basically no maintenance at all um, with what I do on there. Um, yeah, not not a lot to, to explain here. It's it's all pretty straightforward what I'm doing. Um, as with most of these projects, it doesn't always look that spectacular when you're when you're actually putting it in. It's really it's the end result that looks good. Um, you can see on the left of my screen there, I'm getting more alerts about animals escaping, uh, which is why I turned them off in the end because they were starting to annoy me. As you can see, they just walk in and out through the fence. 
Maybe one day they'll fix the uh, the capuchin monkeys. Maybe it's the way I design the habitat. Maybe it's just the capuchin monkeys. I really don't know. Uh, either way, it's very annoying. Um, uh, yeah, there we go. That's life. Um, okay, yeah, just just um, nice bright colours here. I liked the contrast of the the bright orange with the purple. I thought it worked nicely. And then instead of putting more foliage plants in, because I, I thought well, I you know I keep doing that. In my other areas I thought just keep it to plants in this border um, so I just dotted some of these lovely um, oh what are they called gold uh, golden rod is what they're called um, right a bit of a jump there so you can see around the actual enclosure there, I put I put the path over to the bark chip path put a load of the bracken down around it uh, and then I, I, I wanted to cover up a bit of the path and I found that the the bedding, the leaf bedding from the habitat options, if you just put that on the ground, sink it in over the path, it looks like fallen leaves on the path. And they're bracken leaves, and so being around the bracken, um, yeah, well, I think that works really nicely. It looks, you know, really blends the path, and I thought the, the path was a bit too in your face, a bit too brown, um, you know, when I wanted to make it look like quite a, an overgrown, sort of jungly pathway. So yeah, just sinking the um, the bedding into the ground there and then putting all the bracken around it, it worked very nicely. And then these simple wooden posts, um, you know, nothing expensive, keeping the wood theme going, um, really just to discourage the kids from running through the uh, the undergrowth. Um, they, you know, they really wouldn't have anything more than that as fencing. Um, there's, there's no reason for people to run off the path there. Um, and then just a couple of these notice boards, the education boards um, in the obvious places. Um, yeah, simple, effective. It's what I do, <laughs> but it works. You know, it, it looks good, um, it's, and uh, you know the end result is really nice. And these little bricks, um, I love these colourable bricks. They work very nice as a pathway edging or a flower border edging. Um, and I know you can obviously I could do this a bit quicker by doing um, you know copy and paste but actually I quite like to do them individually because it, it keeps it looking natural because the spacing isn't too formulaic it's it's very random and all over the place uh, which is exactly how it would be in real life so I don't mind putting the uh, extra little bit of time and effort in to keep um, keep it looking individual so every stone is individually placed um, and, and just slightly different um, to the one next door to it so yeah um, and then I what I what do I do after this yeah uh, so yes yeah, so this is when I thought that at the time when I was doing this I wasn't too sure what I was actually going to do in the middle here oh, excuse me <coughs> pardon me that's my drink going down the wrong way and um, yes yeah, so, and then I hit upon the idea of, of grass uh, but not just turf but um, some sort of grass and I, and I, I remembered the uh, the aquatic eel grass that I've used before and I thought that's perfect you know so, I, so I, here you can see I'm just filling it in the gaps uh, with the eel grass and it just it just works it looks really nice it doesn't matter that it's an aquatic plant it's um, I think it looks fantastic it's, it's a really nice bit of foliage and it's what I wanted in this area I didn't want it to be high maintenance I didn't want it to be tall uh, I really didn't want it to look like I'd put stuff there at all. Um, you know, this grass looks very natural. Um, just looks like long grass, and it's exactly uh, exactly what I wanted. And then I just wanted a little bit more detail on the building. I wanted some sort of monkey uh, statues or um, some signage or something. And, and so I found these ones. So I thought a couple of them on there just to really highlight the fact that there's monkeys behind this building. Because if you're looking at it from this angle, you can't see what's in the building. Um, so plonk these down on the side here. Um, found the nice uh, tree branch signs as well. Sort of link them all together like this. It's exactly the sort of thing that you, you see in zoos. Just simple graphics, just highlighting what the building is there for and what's around the corner. And I think that's just about it for the time lapse. Uh, I will be back for um, a real time segment where I will show you just a few extra little things that I did after this lighting. 
and uh, yeah so I will see you back in just a, a few seconds time um, for uh, just a, a brief glimpse into some more detail around the monkeys um, but until then uh, bye for now Hey, here we are. It's feeding time at the zoo, quite literally here. Look at these little monkeys gobbling up their fruit. Aren't they happy? At the moment they're behaving themselves. In a minute's time, they'll probably be escaping again. Never mind, for now they're happy and I'm happy. Um, yeah, it's all right. Well, yeah, you can, they are so glitchy, look at these things. They move all over the place. They, they are weird. I don't know if it's me or if it's the game, um, but it's yeah, it's weird. I'm sure it doesn't happen with uh, with the other primates in the game, but these guys just glitch all over the place. Um, I mean, look at that. They're, well, they're quite terrible. <laughs> I mean, it's hilarious, but uh, it feels like I'm playing a game from the 1980s. Um, there we go, never mind. Anyway, what have I got to show you? Not too much. Uh, there's not a lot extra that wasn't in the time lapse for this enclosure, actually. Um, um, let's have a look. There, I wanted to just show you the, what I meant about this uh, this bedding on the floor here, this stuff. The habitat bedding leaves. You just put it on the ground here and it just looks like all the leaves from these ferns have fallen off and covered up the path. Um, uh, I think it's really effective. I'm really happy that I discovered that. Um, I think it works very nicely all around here. And uh, oh yes, this area here. So this is the grass that I put in. And um, you can see I added a few extra bits in here. Some of these tufty grasses, can't remember what they're called. Uh, Triodia grass put some of this in and this papyrus as well I love this absolutely stunning plant um, but I didn't want to put anything else in here anything with big leaves I didn't want anything with color so the just just the simple grasses in in amongst the uh, the eel grass and I found these look at these aren't these adorable these little monkey statues here I, I couldn't resist just plonking them down at the end there so just as a greeting as you come around this corner you immediately look at that and think oh monkeys and then you look at the building and again you can you can clearly see them there and up in the tree you can actually see the uh, the ledges here that the monkeys can sit on so hopefully you'd get the idea pretty quick that there were monkeys in there and you can obviously come around this side where the the living wall is here you come around and you can see the monkeys from this side or you could go along the main area and come in at this end and uh, that's it that's the monkeys um really like the enclosure actually I'm, I'm you know it turned out how i wanted um which is a rarity but it's uh you know it's happened a few times already in this uh, in this zoo um i'm soon to be on a bit of a roll here where i actually managed to get things looking good first time instead of having to completely rebuild enclosures but i'm sure my time will come um so that's it for the episode uh, I hope you enjoyed watching the monkeys and seeing my ideas for them. Um, I can tell you that my next project, uh, which as of recording this, I have in fact completed now, is my biggest project yet. And it will actually span three videos um, because it took me so long to do. Um, but it was worth it. I think the results, I, it's, it's the best thing I've, I've ever built in the game. Not just in this zoo, but in any of my zoos. Um, so I'm really looking forward to showing you that and doing the voiceovers for those. Um, but for now, I will leave you with the monkeys. If I can find them in amongst here. There we go. Let's watch them glitch all over the place. Lovely monkeys. And I will leave you there. So thank you very much again for watching. I really do appreciate your company. And I hope you've enjoyed listening to me gabber on about monkeys. And I will see you in the next video. And until then, take care. See you soon. Bye for now.